Hello, for this video we're going to look at the uh, clustering method k-means. We'll start by opening a notebook. If you have R installed, you should be able to create new from your home page, new R. And that will create a new notebook that uses R as the kernel. I have created one here. Um, and this is the one we're going to be using. Okay, so make sure you check here. We're using R, not Python. Okay, and we're going to be using this European consumption protein data. There's 25 countries, data for 25 countries, and the data is the protein intakes in percentage. We'll open up the file and read the CSV file. Okay, so this is where I have it stored. Obviously, in your case, you'll have it somewhere else. So I'm going to read the CSV file. The file here, as you see, is C. So you have the 25 countries and the percentage of protein, of different types of protein that they eat in each of those countries. So we go back to our example. Okay, uh, we can use eat.csv file. That will read the file. And if we use head, we'll see the first few lines and that will avoid us reading the entire table, okay, just so we know which way it looks like. Now we're going to slice the data so we get only two columns. And we'll do that using the name of the variable, in this case food, square brackets, and then all the rows, that's why there's nothing before the comma, comma, and columns, we only want the white meat and the red meat. So if we run this, we'll see those two columns. So this is how you slice data. Now we're going to start using k-means for clustering the data. Before we start the clustering itself, we're going to set a seed to avoid having different results every time we run our clustering algorithm. And we're going to create clusters. We're going to save the cluster information in something called group meet. We're going to use k-means on that data that we slice, so only on those two columns, we will want to cluster depending on how much red meat or white meat these countries eat. And we're saying here how many clusters we're going to have. We're going to have three clusters. The end start creates uh, 25, in this case with the number is 25, it creates 25 initial random starting points and picks the best one to start with and this group meet will show us the result. Okay, let's have a look at the results. We have three clusters of sizes 8, 12 and 5. These are the mean values for each of the proteins in each cluster and the clustering vector here is the result. So the first country is in cluster 2, second country is in cluster 1 and so on. We can get some extra information and these are the components. So to read the clustering vector you would use cluster to read distances between clusters or elements within a cluster you use within so we're going to be using those ones. Now what we want to do is display these clusters order per cluster. So what we're doing is going to our clusters group meet dollar sign cluster means access the component cluster so read the clusters and put them in order and then we're going to our food and reading it using that order that we've created what this is going to do is give us the countries all the countries in cluster one followed by all the countries in cluster two followed by all the countries in cl cluster three say we wanted to group them using all the proteins and then type it in okay so we'll now call it group all we can set the seed again or leave it it's already set uh, we have all the columns we can get rid of the column if we wanted to three centers start 10 it's not going to make a difference if you didn't have an end start your solution wouldn't be as optimum Okay, a high number here will create the best starting point for the cluster selection. Um, this is the result. We have our three clusters. Those are the sizes. This is our clustering vector. Next, we're going to be looking at what is the optimum number of clusters. 
let's say we're looking at the columns that contain the information for uh, red meat, white meat and fish only. Okay, so this is our data and we're gonna calculate a variable number of clusters and for each of those we'll calculate the distance within, uh, so how different within each cluster the documents or the countries are. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the first cluster where all the document, all the countries are in one cluster. Then for two clusters till let's say twelve, we're gonna recalculate our clusters for that variable number. Okay, and we are looking at the distance between each of the elements within a cluster. So how similar are all the elements inside a cluster? Okay, and then we do a plot. IP just tells us there's going to be bubbles for the points and lines joining them and then our titles for the x and y axis. We have our cluster, a bend in the curve will tell us that is the maximum, uh, the optimum, sorry, number of clusters for this data. Okay, so remember we're clustering using the three proteins, red meat, white meat and fish. And this graph is telling us that for that information, four is the optimum number of clusters. So we're going to group use k-means on the white meat, red meat and fish with four centers because we have determined that that is the best, the optimum number of clusters for this data and we're going to create the clusters and these are our clusters. We'll order the data. And here we have these Central European countries uh, and cluster one, then we have cluster two, Belgium, France, I Ireland, Switzerland and the UK. Then group three is Denmark, Finland, Greece, Norway, Portugal, Spain and Sweden. And group four, Albania, Bulgaria, Italy, Romania, well, Russia and Yugoslavia. So what we've done here is we have learned how to cluster data using k-means, decide what columns we're using, what attributes we're using to cluster the data. And we have used the plot, plotting the internal differences between it, the elements inside each cluster to plot to find where the point where those differences don't stop varying so much. So here we have high differences within each cluster. From here, the decrease is smaller. So the band here is telling us that's the optimum number of clusters. Then we can use that information here to recluster using that number and then organize the information, the data in a way that can be read by humans where we can see what's in each of the groups. We can also get information of the mean value for each of the clusters. So that could give us some information about what the label of the cluster could be. So group one is higher on white meat, cluster two is higher on red meat, and cluster three is higher on fish, and then cluster four has low intake of protein in general. Okay, this is it. Now go to the exercise. Um, using the same data, there's a few questions for you to answer using the methods that we just saw. Bye.